Hello, on today's show we're going to be looking at the HD1 from Retivis. This is branded under the Alance brand which is a, a spin-off uh, from Retivis for the business radios. This is a, uh, a dual band uh, radio, it uses the DMR uh, tier 2 standard protocol. It's compatible with the popular Moto Turbo Series Tier 1 and Tier 2 standards using encryption as well as other, other makes and models of DMR supported radios. It's also compatible with any existing analog two-way radio that you've got, UHF or VHF um, frequencies, and so that makes it easy to migrate over to digital and have a radio that does both in, in your hand there. And uh, unlike a lot of them, almost all of the uh, programming functions can be done from the keypad on this one with with the exception of a couple um, I think you'll agree it's a nice looking uh, unit this it's like a cross really between it's like a GD 77 on steroids that's the best way I'd describe it um, it's got a really nice feel in the hand it feels rugged feels very very well made and uh, even just little details like the control knobs and the overall finish just seems and feels a lot better than some of the cheaper more affordable radios this one retails for about 200 pounds I believe um, the the side socket this caught me out a little bit I hadn't seen the screw on type like this before and this has got the uh, the flush surface mounting type connected with the little spring pins and the plug that push up against it now I'll be honest I found this a little bit fiddly and I'm going to make a little modification to this which I'll show you in the next video which I think some of you might quite like so uh, stay tuned for that if you've got one of these um, one of the websites I saw, not the official website, claimed uh, to uh, be dunking this in water. Now I wouldn't go ahead and do that, but it does claim to be IP67, which just means it's sort of submersible to a few meters. So, but I wouldn't try it. Um, the belt clip, um, it was okay. I've seen sturdier. I'll be honest. Now this is the programming cable with the three-pin spring clip and the what I found to be a slightly fiddly screw. But I have got big sausagey fingers, and this is the troublesome uh, prolific chipset driver plug which you'll see about later on which um I'd forgotten just could how they how problematic they could be um, some of the other kit that's actually in the box a uh, very nice antenna actually this one felt really solid uh, a bit like on the case on UV 68d that also has a similar rugged feeling antenna we'll see how it performs in the field on the next video and uh, this is part one of a, a two-part video again the battery here feels nice and heavy looks fairly substantial it's a 3 amp hour cell at, at uh, 8 volts <coughs> it um, it, it looks and feels great they all do I know but uh, this one's slightly different because it has the spring release clip actually built into it we'll see that in a second um, if you're in the UK they will supply this with a, a Woolwart type charger here the writing on here was so small I could barely read it but um, it's uh, it's a 12 volt output uh, unit uh, giving 8.4 at the charger base to uh, charge the batteries with the actual uh, charging base itself was the usual fare. Fairly, I haven't seen one of this design before. Many of the DMR radios share, share the same sort of design, don't they? But um, this one I haven't seen, but it looks uh, it looks that it'll do the business. right moving on this is what you get in the box this is um, the sum total of the parts and um, I think uh, from the front of it at certain angles it does look a little bit reminds me a little bit of those early Motorola flip phones actually the, the way the keypads laid out I have to say the the keypad itself is really nice I'd like the keypad on it it's really nice and, and quick and sensitive this caught me out a little bit I haven't looked at any reviews of this radio before I I uh, I got this one so I really was going flying blind I wanted to make my own decisions upon it so I didn't want to be uh, swayed by anyone else so this took me a bit of a while to work out uh, the battery side of it but um, so I had a few attempts at sliding it on because pretty much most of the radios that I've got the battery slides on and I, I couldn't see any side grooves so I was struggling a little bit just to see exactly how this clicked together and um, I had a couple of attempts and uh, and then I could see I could see there wasn't any side grooves it just pushed down it was a like a press fit I've not seen that before so slightly unusual there probably is one or two radios in my collection that use a clip on the battery but I've not seen this actual particular way of mounting the battery but it seems very secure once it's actually fitted to the battery itself so I don't think that's going to be going anywhere so I'm quite pleased with that actually so that's a good thing um, the weight is in the specification mounted book but you know I, I always stick it on the scales it's 367 grams there minus the battery clip 
it's a, it's a fairly substantial radio but um, I think you'll agree it's, it's more of a professional radio than some of the more affordable or cheaper radios out there so this definitely you know it's it's a radio that you, that businesses could definitely use and I think it would survive uh, the daily grind of uh, the abuse that uh, people in the workplace give stuff it's certainly got that feel to it it's certainly got that more ruggedized feel I like the um the you can fit a custom you can upload a customized splash screen to that as well if you want so uh, you can actually put any any image you want on there when it starts up which again is quite a nice feature the screen is nice and bright it's very very similar to the Anytone screen to the 878 um, now this was the program I need I'm not a huge fan I'll be honest like I say I've got quite big fingers and um, I struggled a little bit with this uh, first off getting I mean okay I'm actually doing it for the cameras so it makes it more awkward but I have got a way around this which is going to make connecting this much much quicker so again if you if you wait for the second video you'll see what I've got planned for that I think you'll find it quite interesting now the first thing I did was to go onto the Retifis website I'll put a link in the description for this because it's very important on DMR radios or any radio but particularly on DMR radios to get the very latest firmware now what uh, you need to remember with this one there's two versions there's one with the built-in GPS which is the one I've got and there's one without it so you have to choose the correct firmware for your model from the uh, the website there so I had a little look around I was a bit tired when I was doing this to be fair and I was I, I'd, I'd had a long day I've had a long week this week so uh, I, I picked the wrong one initially so I went back and had a look and I saw that there was the HD1 GPS firmware there so I got the right firmware down for the radio and I thought well this would be nice and straightforward we'll just plug it in program it and I'll be away so the first thing I did was to run the firmware upgrade and uh, to my surprise my malware software came up and, and it deleted it it deleted the exe file um it had seen it something in the code it had seen as a malware threat so i had another couple of attempts at uh downloading a different version i tried uh i tried uh putting it in the exclusion list in in the malware software but it still kept doing it so in the end i actually actually had to risk it and switch off the malware software to install it and when i did that I then tried to connect up to the radio and I got absolutely nowhere. I had two or three attempts at doing this and I'd totally forgotten about the issue with prolific drivers. Because I use an FTDI chipset lead with my kit, I don't have this issue with the prolific drivers being updated in Windows. So I never see this problem. So I'd kind of forgotten about the chipset driver problem that um, any of uh, anyone that's regularly programs radios and has a Windows 10 machine will know about that the prolific driver prolific chips were basically copied and that the fake versions that are included in lots of these cheaper programming leads do not run correctly on the latest Windows drivers. You have to run old drivers, 12-year-old drivers, to actually get it to work. And if you go to the Mikalor website, M-I-K-L-O-R dot com website, there's a section there which, which here which explains all this, and it, and it also uh, provides links to the correct software and the correct drivers for your machine, and it shows you some of the differences in the leads and the plugs, so you can make sure that you get the actual correct drivers here. Here are the drivers for my machine. Um, I, I installed the drivers but then I also had to go into the device manager because it still insisted on using the latest drivers so I had to go into the device manager and actually downgrade the drivers to the 2007 drivers and then it still didn't work so I was starting to get really really puzzled I put the put the radio back into firmware update mode and to do that you key up and hold down the button just underneath the main PTT and turn it on and then that puts the radio into a mode where it can receive its new firmware and it's indicated by this little red light on top of the radio so I had done that and uh, still I couldn't get it to program through the PC I'd got the prolific drivers got everything sorted it's a real puzzle so I got my laptop out uh, and I uh, I connected it up into the laptop because I know I knew that the laptop had the old prolific drivers on and uh, plugged it in had another attempt and it didn't work so I was really starting to puzzle and then I what I did was I rebooted my main machine 
and after the machine had rebooted after putting the drivers on then it managed to do the download so it was quite a palaver it took me about an hour and a half to do that so that i think on a radio of this um a sort of value and price and spec they should be really including ftdi chipset drivers because that could re that i mean that's just a um you know a, a call waiting to happen isn't it into suppliers so i mean i think if there's some feedback i can give to retivis on that is if they can update or use a proper ftdi chip in their uh, programming lead that would save a lot of people a lot of hassle because even someone with my experience in programming these had forgotten about that and so yeah anyway i'm not going to go into a great deal on the software side um other people have done some great videos radiosification has done a great video on programming this and there are other people that have done uh some really good videos on programming it up so i'm not going to cover that here uh, also partly because i find it incredibly boring um safe to say it's got the usual 3000 channels 100000 contacts and 1000 priority channels it's got um all of the the features that you'll find on most modern dmr sets and a few more and it also covers uh, um, single group all call remote kill stun uh, it's got um, transmit receive interruption promiscuous function like I say this one's got GPS if you wanted to use that um, I particularly probably won't use the GPS side of it but it's uh, it's fully tier 1 and tier 2 compatible um, it's frequency range if I haven't mentioned that is 136 to 174 and 400 to 480 meg and I say it's dual band analog and digital so it's really a rig all in one um, here we go you know me I like to test power and this Surecom meter I really rate this is really my go-to meter now it, I find it to be the most accurate out of all my meters and here are the results that I found into the dummy load using no uh, PL259s here. Uh, so on analog, uh, this meter actually won't test DMR for some reason. It gives you spooky results. So that's quite close to the uh, to the spec there. 8.7 watts on UHF, medium power UHF again. Uh, really quite good. I, mean, I trust these 4.4 uh, watts. I trust these uh, readings from this meter. I, I find them to be very accurate. So if you haven't seen my review of the Surecom and you're looking for a new meter, go and have a look at that. It's in the, it's in the, uh, the list there. Um, going down to low power, it will go down to as low as 1.36 watts on UHF, which is very, very good if you're looking at conserving your battery. Uh, we moved up to VHF. Results were a teeny bit lower than what they advertise on VHF, but um, I think it's in the ballpark, really. Uh, it's certainly within 10%. Um, medium power was uh, reasonable again at 3 watts and then upon high power it was slightly down from what the spec was in the manual but near enough to make no difference to be fair at 7 watts so yeah I'm quite pleased with the power of that and there's the the specs in the manual so for once uh, you know we have a radio that really does come close so join me in part two which should be out in the next few days maybe the weekend or just after where we'll do the usual range testing with this we'll go out to a few locations we'll try it on dmr we'll put it through the 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 open spot and connect up and we'll get some audio reports and we'll perhaps um, try and speak to a few folks on it to give you an idea of what it sounds like and how it performs uh, but overall i think this is a really good entry into radio into dmr it's a little bit more money than say the gd77 but i personally think you get a lot more radio for you for your money than you do with the gd77 and just for uh, interest there it is next to a bog standard uv5r and there it is next to the gd77 so if you have been thank you ever so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to watch out for part two of this video on the hd1 and thanks again to retivis for sending me this sample for you guys to look at we'll catch you on the next one